How's it going everybody? Stellar here. Uh, today I wanted to talk about um, custom cutters and cutting cutters and everything because I know I've had a few people ask me in my uh, previous videos you know how I did a certain function uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today uh, as far as that goes using box cutter and hard ops. Uh, there's multiple different ways you can do uh, custom cutters and cutting the cutters and a big thing that I like to do is cutting the cutter so drawing just a regular cutter here and then I'm gonna hold shift to keep it live once I execute it and um, make sure that the cutter is actually selected uh, I'm gonna hold alt and scroll wheel to where we can get our end going line here I'm just gonna go ahead and change the uh, orientation to view as far as our cutter is concerned so that way we don't have to worry about it drawing off of a weird angle or anything like that so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just draw a line out of nowhere uh, just kinda having some fun with it kinda like this and um, it's pretty fun you know you can get some really unique shapes and designs going in and so once we get like a good shape going in we can press T to go ahead and increase the thickness of the cutter here and I'm just gonna uh, triple click just to get it to go through all the way and so if you look at this it actually affects the cutter itself giving it more geometry so it allows you to go in and just play with it and have some fun we'll go through and you know just add some more geometry to this and clean it up a little bit and just get a, a really good shape going really quick and really simple and you can get some really fun designs out of this uh, for no effort whatsoever and I love using this tool or this function rather because uh, it's definitely helpful when it comes to getting some quick operations done and some really cool looking geometry so I kept having an, a little bit of an issue there but that's not a big deal and the cool thing is is you can keep going in and uh, just line cutting your cutter every time I'm gonna go ahead and hold shift to keep this one live so that way we can kinda just edit this because uh, I didn't like how that turned out and uh, right now the thickness modifier is still uh, active meaning you can go in and adjust the thickness on the fly which is really cool uh, so it's another non-destructive thing there uh, so what I'm gonna do is just pull that that way and uh, you know just have some fun with it really I'm gonna take that line and the invisible one down there and we're just gonna move this one over to about like that and you can get some pretty cool designs going now another neat thing is you don't have to attack it from one angle you can attack it from multiple different angles making sure our cutter is still selected I'm gonna go and change it to regular box mode here and we're just going to do something like this and hold that live and as you'll see it gives you some neat um, depth and everything uh, basically you're cutting the cutters it allows you to do some pretty unique stuff and I'm a big fan of it and you can even go as far as you know taking the faces and everything and beveling them you know having some fun with that as well now this isn't the most um, accurate way to do it uh, which is what I'm doing right now I'm just kinda showing you guys uh, but you can get in there and get really accurate with it and have some really good results So what we'll do is I'll go ahead and hide this and this is what our finished result would look like utilizing uh, custom cutters as far as that goes. Now there's multiple different ways I could even um, take this shape here and uh, go to our black box here which is our extract and I'll go ahead and select this make sure I am not in view and I'll go back into object and I'll just grab it from corner to corner I'll go ahead and pull it down just to where I'm happy with it nothing crazy and now that I've got that done it will um, be our new cutter so if we go make sure we're on uh, red box which it, that is a function once you select your extraction it'll automatically turn it back into the cut mode um, so what we can do here is we can just draw that shape we just made and we can utilize it like that and it doesn't matter how we do it 
um, it all works as like a custom cutter there. So the possibilities are endless uh, when it comes to something like this. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and utilize a different way of making a custom cutter. I like to go in and do this sometimes. Um, so we'll get our little cut here. I'll go ahead and push it down just to give us some more room to work with so we're not you know, intersecting with anything else. And I'll go ahead and go into edit mode with this. And I add a loop cut here. I know there's a, a better way of doing this. Um, this is just the way I've learned of getting a shape like this going. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that. But before we get too crazy, I need to slap this with a sharpen and a good old bevel. Just because we're having some, some issues here. And it's mostly due because of the crazy geometry here. Um, but that's not a big deal. So moving on, we can grab this shape here. I'll go ahead and hide this face so we're not accidentally selecting it. And I'm going to go ahead and inset this and extrude it outwards. And just bevel it over. No real goal in mind here, just having some fun with the shape and idea. So now that we've got this custom cutter, keep in mind that it is still um, live. You can move it around, you can scale it. You know, do all that crazy uh, good stuff. So that's pretty neat as well. Now what I can do is I'm going to go into the uh, extract again, keep it as box, and I'll go ahead and extract this shape that we just cut here. Right now it's pretty slow because I got a lot of geometry going on, but that's not a big deal. Once you get it through, you're good to go. And I'm going to go ahead and add a different cube here just to show what we got going on. Now there's multiple different ways you can do this. You see how it's all kind of goofy looking. Um, you can draw from the center or keep it uh, scale locked by holding shift. So that's really helpful. Uh, you can drag it in there. Just give it a cut. You can also uh, draw from the center. So say you want your center point to be somewhere kind of eyeballed in the center. I'm just going to use that dot as a jump off point and you want to get your your drawing going but it's not really centered all you have to do is hold alt and shift at the same time while you're drawing and it will keep it uh, center locked for you and then you can go ahead and push that in and have some fun with it as well next up what I'm going to do is uh, explain the neat functions of hard ops, which everybody knows if you were to duplicate this cube here and keep these two collected, or uh, keep these two selected and uh, press Q, you could do the good old fashioned hard ops uh, difference boolean, which is pretty cool. It keeps it, uh, you know, non destructive. You can move it around and everything until you apply the modifiers either through the modifier tab here or just by C sharpening it or using the smart apply function with hard ops. One of the things I like to do is um, instead of having just only the difference here and then you scroll down going to booleans and then it gives you these options here, um, I like the shift Q menu. Uh, in my opinion it's my favorite and it gives you a lot of cool uh, functions to do. Um, while also having all of these options here. So if we want to go ahead and do the union, we can do that. Uh, if we want to do uh, any, pretty much any of the cutters, we will. Uh, it'll do that for us. And this one here is the uh, intersect, so it only keeps what uh, is intersected with it, which this is pretty cool. Um, I'm developing some ideas in which ways we can use this for better use, because as of right now, I haven't really been seeing it been used that very much um, so it's it's definitely a neat thing I, I love the shift Q menu uh, it gives you pretty much some hard ops functions right off the bat instead of just using the normal Q menu uh, you still have your normal bevel functions and everything like that you know you got your sharpen functions and everything too so that's pretty neat Next up is a function that I've been uh, toying with every now and then, and 
I'm really liking the uses of it, and it especially is really good using the make box. It is the lasso cutter tool. Uh, you can get to that by holding alt and scroll wheeling until you get to the lasso selection up here. Next up, I've already got it selected to view because sometimes I like to work from a view oriented position instead of object oriented uh, cutting. So the very cool function about this is all you have to do is click while holding and drag and it'll give you some really unique shapes such as this really nice smooth shapes and the cool thing is is we can go ahead and uh, recall this cutter here and this is the uh, geometry it's leaving me with which is pretty nice it is uh, changeable as far as how dense the geometry is but I like it the way it is now so what we can do speaking of custom cutters and everything is go ahead and just add some loop cuts into here and then we will grab all of these outer edges here and we're just gonna go ahead and push them back like so just something like that nothing crazy and uh, we'll go ahead and make sure our cutter isn't cutting off some of the geometry here which it looks like it is so simple easy fix I'm just gonna grab that and push it back out there so it doesn't leave me with some hanging out geometry that otherwise should not be there go ahead and hide um, get out of edit mode and go ahead and hide that and we can move on all we have to do to get it to look like the other side is just throw a good old modifier mirror on there and we're looking pretty solid so far Next up, I'm just going to select box just to chop that little bit off because I don't feel like fixing it in the cutter. And I'm going to go ahead and C sharp it. Now, the cool new features about uh, box cutter and hard ops is they, especially hard ops, is it has uh, like this little ghost function. I don't know if you've noticed it. Uh, I'll try to get like a good little replay going of that just to show the function how it um, kind of ghosted there. Nice. It works pretty well with fade if that's the type of aesthetic you're going for, which is really cool. And then from there, all you got to do is just go in and give it some nice bevels and everything, and you can have some really unique shapes really fast. Next up, I'm going to show why it's a very useful tool and why I've enjoyed using it. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Make box. And we'll just go ahead and scroll to lasso. Now to get it to show up here down on the bottom like I have it, instead of having to look up here in this menu, all you have to do is click this little uh, hard ops drop down here. Click the little star for context. And then you go down and enable box cutter notifications. Now with this lasso tool, it is really cool. You can do some really unique shapes with it. Have some fun. You can even trace uh, some images and... Um, just have at it and have some fun. So really quickly you can get uh, designs like this out in the flash if you're doing some like stylized letterings. It works out pretty well. And a good reason why I am demonstrating this is because you can use it for a custom cutter. So if I go in here and add a cube, just kind of scale this down a little bit bring this up here this can be used as a custom cutter with uh, hard ops all we gotta do is just do the classic select the cutter first select the object you want to cut and then I'm gonna press shift Q and we can go in and do difference and that's very very cool I like it it's non-destructive and you can get some really unique designs with it now the geometry is gonna be a little bit rough but you can always go in there and fix it afterwards either be it uh, remesh or not because it's this is going to be a really giant end gun so I would definitely get in there remesh it um, for as far as like video game purposes goes because otherwise uh, programs like substance painter and you know like unreal engine and everything they're gonna have a very hard time computing what's going on but that's a simple and easy fix now, another cool feature that I like to use, especially when it comes to custom cutters, is if you get in here and try to basically shape, uh, trace the profile of your shape, this could be used for like a window 
or you know like a grate or just some sort of like accent pieces we go ahead and hold this shape live here and what we can do is you can actually use uh, hard ops functions to cut into those cutters as well so if I go ahead and make this into a good long piece just to make it easy to work with we're not being super accurate here not even worrying about our scales I'll go ahead and move this over here as you can do uh, hard ops functions with it as well go in here and just do a little difference modifier nothing too crazy and it looks pretty good now another crazy cool uh, thing that I like to do is um, you know you can go in with the cutters and just have fun with it and like bevel the edges and everything and that just makes it look really good so there there is functions for um, hard ops as well if that's the way you prefer it instead of using a uh, box cutter to cut the cutters so you can really have uh, fun with it and you know it keeps all of your stuff live so if we go ahead and um, you know apply the boolean on this just by holding uh, control and pressing a to apply that boolean this is now a I keep fat fingering H this is now you know an applied cutter so you then can go in and you know mess around and have some fun with it so for example we can take these edges here and we can just bevel them over keeping in mind that this is in fact a still a non-destructive way to do things um, so it's very helpful for doing in my opinion like really good mech design and everything like that um, so it's really good and you, can, you know you can always scale your objects and everything like you always have been able to so it leads for it gives you room for really good creative design really quickly but I'm hoping that that answered up everybody's questions as far as how I get uh, custom cutters in and uh, yeah so Hopefully that answered your questions. If you guys have any more, definitely you know leave a comment in the video. Um, I do like to answer questions to the best of my ability. Um, stick around for the next video, and if you guys like the video, please like it. Please share it to help out your friends, and subscribe for future content. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.